Hey everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney, your Art Sherpa. And I'm going to show you today how, with some simple techniques and a fun tool, cotton swabs, you can create this gorgeous flower floral landscape. This is a lot of fun. I love to paint flowers. They're my, one of my very favorite subjects. I know they're one of your favorite subjects. But these flowers are very easy for a beginner. And I'm going to break them down step by step. I'm going to show you the techniques and the tools. I'm going to give you all the tips you need to know as a new painter. To help me do that is my husband, John. Hello. He is the co-host on my show, and he keeps me company. He also makes sure that the camera is pointing at the things that I'm talking about and demonstrating. You will be able to see every part of the process here. We won't be fast-forwarding it for you. You'll be able to really understand real-time how it's done. To help you do that in the description down below is a link to a traceable. If you don't want to dry or freehand it, we've got that guide for you that's free and available. There is a step-by-step -step mini book, also downloadable and free. And the materials, remember the materials are suggestion on the project like this. You don't have to have exactly what I have and what I'm using. Remember, a lot of tools will sometimes do a job. So there's really no reason not to jump in and have fun. So get your cotton swabs, get your paint, get your brushes, come back. And I'm going to show you how you absolutely for sure can paint this today. So to begin this, I've got a 9 by 12 stretch canvas. You could use border paper. It doesn't really matter, but I really like the 9 by 12 canvas. I've got a big chunky brush. This is a one inch brush. Um, you can generally find like most of these in hardware stores and everything. You can get a synthetic or natural. If you get a natural filament on it, be sure to wash it out vigorously before you use it so it doesn't shed. Doesn't that seem reasonable, John? Very. Brush shedding. It's a problem. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to use those two to paint this. I have the colors Cad Yellow Medium, Burnt Sienna, Thalo Green, Thalo Blue. I've got a dark purple and a light purple and a titanium white. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to get my brush lightly wet and I'm going to load up white. See how I'm coming from the edge of the paint? That's a good way for me to control that. Now you can use any big brush you have. You don't have to have one just like this. This is just an option. And I'm going to come, I'm going to leave about a hand at the bottom and I'm going to brush back and forth with my white going up. Adding a little bit of water it, with my white going up. It really is whiter than the surface. It is whiter than the surface, but we're not going to leave it that way. We just want to prime it with a color because this is going to help us control the ombre, the sky ombre. So I'm going to get a little of my phthalo blue on my brush, just a little bit. And I'm going to come to the beginning and just brush lightly back and forth, kind of creating that distant sky kind of effect. See how that is? Mm -hmm. Little light, little streaky, and that's what we're going for. I'm going to add a little more blue to my brush, and then I can brush down, blending into what I had before, and then a little more blue for the top to give us the darkest part of our summer sky or spring sky. That's a very pretty sky. Yeah, that's a clear day kind of sky. I'm going to brush this down. Everything is still wet, so that's going to let the paint kind of come down into it and blend. And I can wipe this off on a paper towel, and then if I just lighten my pressure when I come down, like where I'm barely touching the canvas, you can see I get a fairly nice blend. Now, step two I want to do before my paint dries, if I can, so I'm going to rinse out my brush, dry it off. Let's come right back in step two, but don't let your paint dry yet. So this is still wet, and I'm going to be putting some background into it. I'm going to take my phthalo green and my burnt sienna. You can just take any green or brown you have and a little cad yellow, and I'm going to come here where my field is going to be joining my sky and paint that green across just back and forth and then I'm going to come up a little bit into the sky. See how that does a nice little blend oh, from where wow, the green yeah. is to the sky is. That works because this paint was wet and this paint is wet. But look guys, if your paint dries on you too fast, that's okay. It won't ruin the project. This is just something to get familiar with because it creates a nice basis. 
Now for step three, we're definitely going to want to dry everything. Rinse out your brush that you've been painting with so the paint doesn't dry on it. Dry your surface thoroughly and I'm going to show you the next fun and easy step. So now I'm going to add some blades and leaves that are going to be the anchor for my lavender. I'm going to use a brush called a Filbert. Um, the brand I'm using is Simply Simmons. But for this, you could use a round or bright or really any brush that you can get a line with. This is more about the directionality and the shape of the line than the brush that you're using. I'm going to get my brush a little bit wet. And I'm going to go ahead and start with my... Halo green and my brown. So you're just your green and brown. And I'm going to come here from the bottom and I'm going to make little upward strokes in flicking motions. Yeah, and this is why you could use a round or a different brush. I press hardest at the beginning here and then I release and taper it out. That's how I'm getting that grass like stroke. The other thing that is getting this to look kind of leaf or natural is that there's curve to it and it's messy. Some are longer, some are shorter. I'm not mowing the field. Right. Right. And the nice little blending gives us some kind of cool di distant atmospheric effect. Um, if I hopefully get you painting here and keep you painting, um, this technique later becomes part of our atmospheric perspective as we get into higher and higher hoots. So if you're enjoying this and you think, oh, I want to paint more, definitely hit that subscribe button because there's 1,500 other lessons that you could do. That's a, Varying that's a difficulty. Hmm? That's a couple. That's a couple. That's a couple. We can't, more than one option. More than one option. <laughs> All might, right. Might See, have a subject that we'd you'd be interested in. I, I might have covered a few things for beginners. Now, I'm just on the toe of the brush. The toe of the brush is the tip here, right? And I'm just curving that up and flicking, and that's how I'm getting those tapered edges. That's how that's done. Does it on any brush, right? And you can see, like, sometimes it dry brushes out and it's light, but that just makes the grass look farther away. Okay. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and add a little yellow to my green mix, as you do. See how it lightened it right up? Yeah. I lighten my greens with yellow first. The reason being, and I'm going to add some of these blended in right over the wet paint, and they will blend into each other. Yeah, just a bit. The reason I like yellow is that it keeps the green from going totally mint. Oh. We're just adding some, you know, summer color to it. So we've got some depth, right? Just because we're a beginner doesn't mean that we can't paint really beautiful stuff with depth and complexity. I'm just bringing that yellow through and I'm letting it blend wet into wet. All right. This is pretty great. I really, really like this. Now we're going to dry it all the way because for the next technique, we don't want the green to lift up. So for the next part, I'm going to take a dark purple and a light purple. You just pick whatever your favorite purples are. If you have one purple in your paint kit, you can always add white to lighten your purple, but you want at least two values. I am going to take a couple drops of water over to my paint because this particular paint is a thicker paint. So I want to thin it. Now you can also buy craft paint, which is kind of like already thinned. I'm using an artist knife. You could use a brush to mix in the water. I've already done it to the purple. I just wanted to show you how I did it. I just took a couple drops of water and thinned it out. So that's how we went from this thick paint to thinner paint. Now I've got cotton swabs. This is Q-tip brand cotton swabs, but they're just cotton swabs. Um, bunched together with little rubber bands. If you get fuzzy cotton swabs, um, that's probably the kind that you got, but I do have some tips on all my Q-tip videos on how to fix that. So you can watch that, like, uh, like how to have a better Q-tip painting tip video. It's like five minutes. You'll love it. All right. I'm going to take one of the bunches of three and I'm going to begin with my darkest color. I'm going to tap up and down into the thinned color and I'm going to come here and draw a little stalk A flower going up. How I taper it is I kind of edge it, right, and then go all three. So I've got the three buds, but I'm using more of the two. 
and I'm going to make sure that some of these stocks are higher and lower than others. All right. Um, just because that's how flowers are. Just because we're doing something with a Q-tip doesn't mean that we don't take what we know about flowers and apply it. If you like painting flowers, I have a 30-day painting challenge I did with my community on painting flowers. <laughs> Not quite Q-tip flowers, but if it's an interest of yours, it is step-by-step -step with mini books, just like this has. Coming up there. I'm going to try to really place these around my canvas so that they are some tall and some short. And I've got individual Q-tips as well if I need uh, more shaping options. I'm not putting in the stems yet because I want to see what buds I have to address in the painting. Right. And it's really just about filling up this nice little field with lots of fragrant lavender buds. Maybe some of them are coming off the bottom, right? Because this picture is bigger than just the canvas. Right. Just because we're, doing, we're off. doing fun stuff, right? doesn't mean that we can't use regular art theory and enjoy ourselves. Yeah. And you can see this deep purple. It's definitely deep purple. Just tapping up and down. It's actually a very relaxing process. I'm really filling out my flowers. I haven't even changed out Q-tips. And that again is, I've got a nice brand here, right? And so they give me a good result. But again, if you're getting the fuzzies, you can change out often. You can do what I call the spit sizing, which I demo. But it does work. And kind of maybe uh, flip to the other side. I want a little more control and I want to do a high, a higher one. You know, I'm just making sure that we've got dimensionality. So that's some nice up and down. That's a lot of buds that are there. Let's call this a step. When we come in, we will do our lighter color. It doesn't have to be dry for the next step, but it's okay if it is. So on the next one, I'm gonna be adding my highlights. I'm taking another bunch of three. I might get it in my light purple and even some in my white, just so that there's a little kind of variance in the paint. I'm gonna come here and add some highlights. I don't want to take out all of the dark purple, and that's because it is what gives the flowers dimensionality. So tapping up and down, and mostly the light purple, um, a little titch maybe of white on the tip from the white area over here, and just come in, create. Second layer of your lavender.
just loading up the paint and kind of controlling my fuzzies here. Jumping up and down. It's like a pounce. Pounce in the canvas. And remember, you can always take individual Q-tips too and create little detailing. Go back and put back shadows. Get another little bunch. These are fuzzing out. Just tapping through. And you can see I'm leaving a lot of the purple underneath. It's very dark because that's how I get the dimensionality. I'm kind of edging to the side here, and that's another way I can choose to leave more purple showing. Okay, if your lavender is a little different than mine. Perfectly fine. If this is fun, I have a slightly more complicated version of this with a multicolor background and a set of butterflies. So if you're like, oh, I really love this, I want more. I definitely have more. Tapping up and down. The other reason we like to kind of do this in the method that we do, that Jen and I do, where it's sort of real time, is because it lets you guys see how long something should take you. You know, though I do work pretty quickly, and that's just because I have a, a few minutes out here in the world painting. So I'm kind of confident how I want it to be. And you might take a little longer because, you know, maybe this is the first time you're thinking about these kinds of creative decisions. And, you know, you're still just working that out. Now, when I have all those out, I'm going to go ahead and take an individual cotton swab. And I'm going to get it in my white and purple. And what I'm going to do is kind of detail out these little tips here. See how that does a nice job there? And always come back into my dark purple to make differentials on that. There we go. Coming through here. You just make little decisions that kind of add a little detailing to your painting. This could be like a little bit of the light hitting. If my Q-tip is getting fuzzy, I can switch the end. You know, you can thin your white with water or you can, you know, again, get craft paint or professional grade uh, soft body or fluid paints. Any of those are fine. Probably if you're doing this like a, for an at-home painting party or something with your friends and family, um, craft paint is a good choice. <laughs> you're doing it all the time though. Be nice to upgrade. It really just depends on what you're doing art for. Here we are painting flowers. And they look good, these flowers. They really do. They're very, very pretty flowers. Some of my favorite. And I like how you can do these in more colors. Like, you don't have to stick to this color, but if you wanted to, like, Rainbow them up. Oh, I think we have rainbow ones somewhere. <laughs> yeah, rainbow them up. Use any colors that you want. Uh, customize them any way you want to. Look at that. So that, oh, I got one last one, don't I? So sometimes you get so busy into it, you're like, oh, I can see that little guy. Give him a nice little finish there. I like this very much. When we come back, we'll add a few little stems. So on this, I just want to finish this with a few stems. I'm going to get my brush. I have a number four round in the Simply Simmons line, but just any nice brush with a good point. 
I'm going to go ahead and get my green and brown together. I may even work some of my blue in here because what I want is a very dark color. It shows against the background. We're just going to add some stems. A little downward stroke. That little bit of stem makes a big difference in how the piece looks to our mind. We don't necessarily have to see the whole stem because as you see here, you know, these are in these tall blades of grass. Speaking of, you can take your paint and add some little tall blades. See how we're doing? Just individually in this. Add a few little bits. Because, I mean, just because we're having a fun paint doesn't mean we can't do a great paint. I'm going to go ahead and get a little of my green and brown and yellow together like before. Put a little white into it this time. Because I went so yellow first, it just goes like to a new spring green. And to add a highlight to some of the stems and some of the blades. And that actually pushes some of these in and out of the growth. Little touches. Oh, look at that, man. We just, simple stuff made a beautiful flower painting. Look at us go. It really did. Let's go ahead and give that a signature. I need a little detail brush. I think I'm going to take a, what are you here? I'm going to grab a little liner. This is a little script liner. I'm going to get it wet. And I think I'm going to go ahead and make a very, very light green. The sign over here in the corner. Cannot wait to see your version. Hopefully you saw this and thought, I can do that. And then realized, oh, I really like painting. And you want to do more. And I would be happy to help you do that. Because I think you can. People can do so much more than they realize with art. Have a great time with it. Oh, what a fun painting. Okay. When we come back, I'm going to tell you what you're going to do next. Guys, I want to thank you for spending this time with me. I hope you had a great time painting. What's really fun is in this painting, you learned some cool art things. You learned how to create a gradated sky for atmospheric perspective. You created depth in your grass through value and you created form in your flower through texture. And these are all really fun art techniques that you would use in even more complicated paintings. So hopefully this got you excited about art and you're interested in doing more. If you are, be sure and hit that subscribe button. Check my playlist for other Q-tip paintings and beginner paintings. I even have a free beginner painting course that you can do anytime if you've never painted before and you'd like to take about a year or two years of frustration off your art experience, I highly recommend that. John and I really love bringing you guys these free art lessons. So definitely let me know in the description down below what you love, what you'd like to see, because I do this for you. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.